Nico. Today we're going to read a story called Maxie. Look at that. Maxie has an orange kitty. Kind of like your orange ears. All right. Maxie lived in a in three small rooms on the top of an old brownstone house on Orange Street. She had lived there for many years, and every day was the same for Maxie. Every morning at seven days a week, every morning exactly at seven o'clock, Maxie raised the shades of her three front windows. There she is, raising them. There's her kitty. Every morning exactly at 710, Maxie's large orange cat jumped up on the middle windowsill and sprawled there in the morning sun. And at 7.20, if you were watching Maxie's back window, you could see her raise her shade to the very top. And then she uncovered a bird cage. On the perch inside the cage was a yellow canary. He was waiting for his water dish to be filled and it always was if you were still watching at 7.22. Are you falling asleep? At 8.15 every morning, Maxie's door opened with a tired squeak. Maxie's old leather slippers made slapping sounds as she walked down the four flights of uncarpeted stairs to the front door. Outside the front door, there were bottles of milk in a container and Maxie always tried to hold the door open with her left foot while she reached out to get her milk. But every morning it was just a little too far for her reach. The door always banged shut and locked behind her. So at 8.20 every morning Maxie rang the bell marked superintendent. The superintendent, whose name was Arthur, would open the door for Maxie and let her in with her milk only Maxie and the man at the grocery store knew what she ate for breakfast, but everyone knew that she drank tea. At 8.45 every morning, they could hear the whistle of her tea kettle. How Maxie loved the whistle. She loved it so much that she let it sing out for one full minute. Dogs howled, cats whined, and babies bawled, but everyone knew that when the whistle stopped, it would be 8.46. And it always was. The mailman knew more about Maxie than anyone else did. He knew that she had a sister in Chicago who sent her a Christmas card every year. He also knew that when Maxie planted flowers in her window boxes because every spring he delivered her a seed catalog. Then a few weeks later he delivered packets of seeds. And every morning at nine o'clock Maxie walked down the stairs for a second time in her leather slippers. She went outside and put her small bag of garbage in the pail on the front step or stoop step. Then she came back in and waited for the mailman. She w walked slowly past him in the hall, watched him put all the mail in the slots for the other people who lived in the house. Then she would climb the four flights of stairs again, resting at each landing. When she got to the top, Maxie went into her apartment and in the door closed after her with the same tired squeak. One afternoon at 105, she, just as she did every Afternoon at 105, she moved the bird cage with the yellow bird in into the front window. It was shady and cool there now. The large orange cat moved to the back window and sprawled out there, soaking up the sun that matched the color of his fur. Just like your orange ears, Nico. You're perfectly happy just laying there. Day after day, Maxie said to the cat, all you ever want to do is move from one windowsill to another and watch the world go by. You don't need anyone and no one really needs you. 
but you don't seem to care. Maxie turned away from the window. I care, she said sadly. I'm not a cat, but I might as well be. Maxie felt very tired and she went to bed. That was Monday. On Tuesday morning at seven o'clock, the three shades on Maxie's front windows and the one on her back window remained down. At 7.10, the large orange cat was still asleep at the foot of Maxie's bed, and at 7.30, there were no sweet wobbling sounds. That morning, no one heard the sounds of Maxie's leather slippers on the stairs. Her tea kettle was, fill was filled with empty silence. At nine o'clock, the mailman came with his daily mail, and he had a seed catalog for Maxie and he waited for her to come down the stairs since she didn't come and this was most unusual he decided to deliver the catalog to her door he climbed the four flights of stairs and he knocked and waited there was no sign of maxie at 903 mr turkle who lived on the third floor came hurrying up the stairs at 905 mr and mrs morehouse got there from across the street at 907 Mr. Trueheart came over from next door and Susie Smith came at 9.10 with her twin brothers. Five members of the family on the second floor made it by 9.13 and then Arthur, the superintendent, by 9.17. There were 17 people, three dogs, two cats, all waiting for Maxie to open the door. And when she did, they all went in and they found Maxie in bed. More people came up the stairs and someone called the doctor and by the time he got there there were 42 grown-ups 11 children in maxie's small living room and when the doctor came out of maxie's bedroom he shook his head sadly maxie isn't really sick he said she's lonely she doesn't feel loved she doesn't feel that anyone needs her no one said anything for a minute and then suddenly mr trueheart mrs trueheart got up walked right past the doctor and into the bedroom. Maxie, she shouted angrily, you let me down. You and your warbling bird let me down. Every morning I wake up to hear that bird and then it's my job to wake up my husband. He has the morning shift at the corner diner and he's still asleep. Well, there's, there must be at least 75 people in that diner right now waiting for their breakfast. They'll have to go to work on empty stomachs because of you and that yellow bird. Everyone else crowded into the bedroom and Maxie sat up in bed and listened to what they had to say. I couldn't go to school this morning, Susie Smith said. I missed my bus because I didn't hear your tea kettle whistle. Isn't that sad, Nico? The school bus never came this morning, said Mr. Turkle, who drove the bus. I didn't wake up in time. I never heard Sarah Sharp's footsteps on my ceiling. Sarah Sharp was the nurse who lived just above Mr. Turkle. They were there. There were a lot of people waiting for her right now at the hospital. She's always got up when she heard Maxie's door squeak. Mr. and Mrs. Morehouse both had very important jobs, but they had missed their train that morning. Their alarm clock was Maxie's window shade. Arthur hadn't, hadn't swept the front steps that morning. He overslept because Maxie didn't ring his bell. He hoped no one would complain. They all talked about it and decided that there must be there there must be about 400 people who needed Maxie or who would need someone else who needed Maxie every morning. Maxie smiled. She got out of bed. She made a pot of tea. And in fact, she made five pots of tea. Each time the kettle whistled, the dogs howled, the cats whined, and the babies bawled, Maxie listened and thought about how many people were going to be touched by those sounds, her sounds. By 9.45 that morning, Maxie had served tea to everyone, and she was so pleased. There's her kitty. Mm -hmm. All right. That's, this was a story that I read when I was a girl, Miko. Mm -hmm. So thank you all so much for watching this reading with our kitties. This is our cat, Miko. I hope you enjoyed this.
And Lucy was also over here enjoying the book as well. All right, comment down below if you'd like to see more books that my mom reads to the cats. Love you guys all so much. Bye-bye!